Hello children, welcome to biology class. We are discussing the topic animal tissues. Which are the four types of animal tissue? Epithelial tissue, muscular tissue, nervous tissue and connective tissue. We discussed epithelial tissue, muscle tissue and nervous tissue on last week. Today we are going to discuss about connective tissues. Connective tissue is found among the tissues all over the body and it connects the tissues each other. One of the important examples is blood. In lower classes you might study about the constituents of blood and the function of blood. What is the major function of blood? Ah, it transports oxygen and nutrients to all the part of your body. Isn't it? So today we can discuss more about connective tissues and different examples. Let's discuss, shall we? Connective tissue. Cells of connective tissue are loosely spaced and embedded in an intercellular matrix. The matrix may be jelly-like, fluid, dense or rigid. The nature of matrix differs in concordance with the function of the particular connective tissue. Okay. Children, our textbook one sentence is the take a drop of blood on a slide and observe different cells present in it under a microscope. So during this pandemic time it is very difficult to uh, do a live experiment, isn't it? So this is the microscopic view of a drop of blood. Here you can see red colored red blood cells this is red blood these are red blood cells and in between you can see dark violet colored cells too these are wbc wbc white blood cells they are devoid of any color but for this experiment we are doing leishman stain leishman stain colored violet huh? that's why this WBC cells that means a white blood cells color is, is in this dark violet color. Okay. So these are red blood cells and these are white blood cells. Clear? One more microscopic view. Here you can see 1, 2, 3, 4 WBC and a lot of red blood cells. Isn't it? So the first example of connective tissue is blood. Blood has a fluid that is liquid matrix called plasma in which red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets are suspended. The plasma contains proteins, salts and hormones. See one more diagram. Here you can see a lot of red blood cells, isn't it? concave shape circular red blood cells and here you can see different shaped white blood cells they include neutrophil lymphocyte monocyte basophil etc these all are different types white blood cells then this is platelet platelet helps for blood clotting now let's discuss the constituents of blood Blood in blood there are 55% of plasma. Then it includes 45% of blood cells. In plasma, 90 to 92% is water. Then it includes proteins, minerals, glucose, amino acids, and lipids. Blood cells consist of three types of cells. First one RBC or red blood cells. Second one WBC or white blood cells. And the last blood cell is platelet. The first type red blood cell. What is the function of red blood cells? Yeah, it carry oxygen from lungs and it carry this oxygen to all the part of your body. It is red in color, circular in structure and concave in center. So I will show you the diagram again. See, 
These are red blood cells, circular in outline, concave shaped, red in color. Okay, this is red blood cells. Next one, white blood cells. We can divide white blood cells into two major categories as granulocytes and egg granulocytes. This classification is based on the presence of granules on their cytoplasm. We know that being a cell, they will have cytoplasm, isn't it? But some of the WBC cells are having granules on their cytoplasm. They are called granulocytes. Three important types of cells are included in granulocytes, which are the basophil, eosinophil and neutrophil. Basophil, eosinophil and neutrophil. Okay, so see, here you can see new diagram of neutrophil and basophil. So in the cytoplasm you can see granules, small dot shaped granules. Can you see? So that's why they are called granulocytes. The next category of WBC is egg granulocytes, which means oh, they are devoid of granules on their cytoplasm. There are two types of egg granulocytes, monocyte and lymphocyte. Clear? So I will show you the diagram of egg granulocytes. See children, these two are, this is lymphocyte and this is monocyte. See, the cytoplasm is devoid of granules, isn't it? That's why they are called egg granulocytes. Clear? And last one, platelets. What is the function of platelets? Yes, blood clotting. Okay? So, in our textbook, only the diagram is there. There is no explanation, children. While watching the class, you just write down the lecture notes. Okay? And the explanation I will give you in the notes part. Okay? And file and download it. So, I hope you understood the cons this flow chart. I will explain it again. Blood consists of 55% of plasma and 45% of blood cells. Plasma include water, protein, minerals, glucose, amino acids and lipids. Then blood cells. There are three types of blood cells which are the red blood cells or RBC. Then white blood cells or WBC. Then the third type, platelets. Red blood cells, red in color. Then they help to carry oxygen to all the part of body. White blood cells, they are white in color. And in the picture, it is violet. Isn't it white? Ah, it is a color of the stain we added. Okay. Actually, these white blood cells are white in color. And what is the function of white blood cells? Yes, they provide immunity to our body. They are the soldiers of our body. They provide immunity to us. Okay. And there are two types of WBC. Granulocytes and egg granulocytes. This classification is on the basis of presence of granules and absence of granules on their cytoplasm. These three, basophil, eosinophil, neutrophil, they are having granules on their cytoplasm. That's why they are called granulocytes. Whereas monocytes and lymphocytes are lacking these granules on their cytoplasm. That's why they are called a granulocytes. Clear? And last type is platelets. They help for blood clotting. Clear, children? Then... If the function is asked to write the fun, uh, fun, if the question is asked to write the function of blood, you can write blood flows and transport gases, digested food, hormones, and waste material to different parts of the body. Okay. Then let's discuss the second example of connective tissue that is bone. We know that bone forms the frameworks that support the body, isn't it? It also anchors the muscles and supports the main organs of the body. 
it is strong and non flexible tissue bone cells are embedded in a hard matrix that is composed of calcium and phosphorus compounds then the third example is ligament i know this term is very much familiar to you isn't it ligament two bones can be connected to each other by another type of connective tissue called ligament what is ligament two bones are connected each other you might heard about the ligament fracture isn't it actually what is a ligament ah it is a connective tissue that connects two bones okay see this is a ligament it connects two bones and this tissue is very elastic and it has considerable strength and it contain very little matrix and next example is tendon what is a tendon that connect bone to muscle and are other type another type of connective tissue tendons are fibrous tissue with great strength but limited flexibility see children this diagram will help to you will help you to explain the difference between tendon and ligament what is a ligament ligament is a connective tissue that connect two bones whereas tendon connect a muscle to a bone clear next example of connective tissue is cartilage it has widely spaced cells the solid matrix is composed of proteins and sugar see the presence of cartilage on this bone can you see the cartilage smoothens bone surfaces at the joints and is also present in the nose ear trachea and larynx so you can experience the presence of cartilage on your on the bridge of your nose you just experience it huh? can you see a flexible structure in the nose Ah, on the bridge, the nose bridge are made up of a flexible, a smooth substance called cartilage. Not only present on your nose, you just check the pinna, your external ear. The scientific term for your external ear is pinna. The diagram, ah, uh, the diagram of pinna is given here. Pinna, P-I-N-N-A. Then the trachea. Then on the larynx, this. part of your body are having the presence of cartilage we can fold the cartilage of the ear isn't it but we cannot bend the bones in our arms why because the bones are made up of very hard substances so this diagram will help you to see the locations of cartilage in the human body on the pinna on nasal bridge and on larynx and on your trachea there are presence of cartilage next connective tissue is areolar connective tissue areolar connective tissue is found between the skin and muscles around blood vessels and nerves and in the bone marrow where are the locations of areolar connective tissue found between the skin and muscle around the blood vessels and nerves and in the bone marrow it fills the space inside the organ support internal organs and helps in repair of tissue here i add diagram of areolar connective tissue then the last example is adipose tissue children let me ask one question where are fat stored in our body yes fat storing adipose tissue fat stored in adipose tissue this fat storing adipose tissue is found below the skin and between internal organs the cells of this tissue are filled with fat globules then storage of fat also lets it act as an insulator okay so that is about connective tissues so today we explain the general characteristics of connective tissue and we discuss different examples which are the examples of connective tissue ah blood bone 
ligament, tendon, cartilage, areola tissue and connective tissue. Children, you study each and every example and don't forget to copy the flow chart of constituents of blood to your notebook and read the textbook thoroughly. Okay? Then read the notes and answer the test question. Thank you children.